Hey, it's Jeff Zito, and welcome to another episode of Celebrity Jobber, where we talk to famous people about their first job, what their big break was. You know, was it a few different events over a course of time, or was it, boom, one thing that kind of launched you off into the stratosphere? And also, maybe if they weren't famous, what might they be doing? My guest today is Dr. Philip McGraw. You know him as Dr. Phil from TV. He wants you to get excited about your life. What's this guy's story? And does he do anything else other than the TV show? Oh, he does. And we're going to find out from my guest, TV's Dr. Phil, my guest this week on Celebrity Jobber. The Celebrity Jobber Podcast with Jeff Zito. If you like what you hear, please subscribe, give a five-star rating, and leave a review. Check out all our past episodes on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you pod. What if these celebrities weren't famous? What would they have become? What was their first job? We're about to find out. Hey, Dr. Phil. Good morning. Hey, I I heard you on the Joe Rogan podcast, and now you're on the Celebrity Jobber podcast. What a week for you, huh? I'll tell you what. I'm running with the big dog. Well, listen, I I wanted to talk about a few of the the new business opportunities that you have uh, these days, but just a a little bit of history, if you don't mind. You grew up in in Oklahoma. Can you tell me what your, your mom and your dad did? Well, my mom was a stay-at-home mom and then did, you know, kind of part-time work. And uh, when I was born, my dad was a head football coach at Benita, Oklahoma. Oh, wow. The night I was born, I interrupted his first ever game as head coach at Benita High School. <laughs> oh, wow. Interrupted his first, uh, his first game. And then, you know, he worked in the oil field. Um, business selling uh, grill bits and pipe and that sort of stuff. So we moved all around. We were all over Oklahoma. When you went to college, Dr. Phil, what was it that you were studying in college? What did you think you wanted to be? Did you think you wanted to be a a psychologist or psychiatrist when you were going to school? I I really didn't know. When I I, I went to University of Tulsa on a football scholarship. Oh, wow. uh, Tulsa Golden Hurricanes. And... um, uh, that was kind of my focus at the time, but I, I wasn't really uh, uh, a young man of vision at that point, let's just say. I, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, um, and then I got a pretty severe head and neck injury that ended that, um, and I ultimately took up tennis and uh, went back to school on a tennis scholarship. Wow. Uh, uh, much smaller school, by the way. Okay. And, uh, uh, but I did go on a tennis scholarship, so I was able for athletics to pay my way through school most of the way. Um, and uh, at that point, I did know that uh, I wanted to uh, either go to law school or um, pursue psychology. And so I kind of did both. I did uh, clinical psychology, but then I did a postdoctoral fellowship in forensic psychology or psychology of the law. So I, I kind of got a a bite out of both. Okay, and then when you, what was your first gig out of out of college? Was it uh, were you a psychiatrist or psychologist right out of college? I was. I was in private practice for a good while, and um, I, I did a lot of work in corporate America, uh, leadership training, and things like that. And uh, then spent a lot of time in the litigation arena because I launched a company called Courtroom Sciences which is a trial science firm where we did jury selection and uh, witness training and trial strategy and that sort of thing. That's how I met Oprah. Okay. Which kind of steered me, in, steered me into the television. And, and tell me, do you think meeting Oprah, was that your big break, you know, quote unquote? Was that what got you to the next level? And could you tell us a little bit about that chance meeting with her? Um well, it, it wasn't a chance meeting. Um, we were hired um, by Harpo Productions, Courtroom Sciences, to represent her in the Mad Cow case up in Amarillo when she was sued by the cattle growers uh, up there and worked with her for like two and a half years. And um, uh, at the time, 
uh, courtroom science was representing probably 50 of the Fortune 100, representing all of the airlines anytime there was a crash. Um, we represented the airlines in that regard. We represented all of the uh, uh, studios um, in Hollywood, um, all the movie studios, Paramount, uh, Universal, uh, all the different uh, studios out there. So we had a very successful uh, trial science business. Um, you know, we represented Exxon, Coca-Cola, uh, just virtually everybody. So it doesn't make as good of a rags to riches story because we were very successful in what we did. And then uh, I was on the Oprah show on every Tuesday for five years before we launched the Dr. Phil show. So it was kind of a process, I suppose. Yeah, it definitely. It, it seems to be like a, a series of you know, a few years that led to where you are today. What about your first job, Dr. Phil? Can you take me all the way back to your very first gig ever? I can, I, I can, but before we move off of it, let me also say there is no way I can overstate the O factor, the Oprah factor. I mean, you talk about a huge, huge advantage of having Oprah uh, to support you in launching the Dr. Phil show and all, and she's still a great friend, and, and we're still very much uh, in touch, but what a what a wonderful boon to your television career when you're launched by the number one voice probably in the history of television. So No doubt about it. And I think that is pretty cool because you, you have gone on to be quite successful over the years on your own. But I kind of just I like how you acknowledge that that, uh, y you know, that really helped considerably. And she was just uh, the biggest thing going at the time that that you yeah. you know launched can't give her enough credit I, i'll tell you for sure my first job uh was at an a and w root beer stand oh in the oklahoma i was a car hop and um i worked there for a short time and that was right before they put all of the car hops on skates oh. <laughs> and when they put us on skates I was toast, baby. <laughs> that was the end of your career at that uh, particular point oh, in time. There are still hamburgers rolling down the highway <laughs> from where I scattered them everywhere. I was I was not good on skates carrying a tray of food. Oh, that's right? hilarious. These days, Dr. Phil, on top of, you know, your TV show, which my mother watches all the time, and I watch it early in the morning uh, too. Uh, these days, I, I just started finding it, uh, you know, next to the sports channel that I watch that starts at eight, and you're on a little bit before that, so I start catching the end of Doctor Phil in the morning. But you've got a couple new things going on. One being a book, the other being a network. And I want you to talk a little bit about both of those things. The book, We've Got Issues, How You Can Stand Strong for America's Soul and Sanity. Who is this book for? Yeah, this book is for really every American that is concerned with where this country is headed right now. Everyone is concerned that we're seemingly rewriting history, biology, facts, um, language that we can use and not use, uh, what's happening with our young people. Uh, it's just, uh, if, if you're concerned about the direction that America's taking right now, um, you know, all, it, this is not a political book at all. This is a psychosocial book. It has to do with the psychological collective personality of America. It has to do with uh, what we can do to get some common sense back in this country and move it forward. And the network, Merritt Street Media, is a 24-hour a day, seven-day-a-week network that's built around my value system, and we've got issues. Uh, is kind of the blueprint for what that network is going to be all about. Those two go hand in hand, and they are right together. So it's, um, and I'm very excited. The book comes out next Tuesday. You can pre-order it now on Amazon.com. The network launches uh, April 2nd, 
And uh, I, I couldn't be more excited about everything I got going on right now. Yeah, it seems like it seems like there's a lot going on in the network. I'm interested. Is it going to be some Dr. Phil, some original programming? Is Oprah going to be? Could you tell us a little bit about the schedule of what's going to be on the network? Yes, we're going to have four hours of news every day. We're going to have uh, <clears throat> others on the network. Uh, Mike Rowe is on. Bear Grylls is on. Cool. Uh, Nancy Grace is on. Uh, we got a lot of original programming, and then we'll have uh, uh, some legacy programming. Uh, Cops uh, is uh, a series that will be appearing on the network, and then we've got some others that we haven't announced yet, but will soon, and uh, it's going to be the biggest launch since Fox. Did you ever imagine all of this? Like, what was it you wanted to be when you grew up? You were a young guy looking at your life. You couldn't have seen Dr. Phil TV books. What did you want? What was your dream when you were a kid? Well, there's two questions there. Did I ever envision this? No. And what did I think I was going to do when I grew up? I thought I'd probably be an airline pilot. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Well, guess what? I, th- I think you figured it out. And uh, it was a real pleasure talking to you, man. Jeff, thank you so much. Uh, I, I'm always happy to talk to Zito, and I hope I can do it again. Oh, you better believe it, pal. Thanks again, Dr. Phil. Okay, guy grows up in Oklahoma. Seems like pretty humble beginnings. Mother was a stay-at-home, which happened quite a bit back then. And uh, father worked in the oil fields, but was also a football coach in his very first game. Dr. Phil said was interrupted by his birth. I wonder if his dad's team got the win that night. So believe it or not, I had no idea that Dr. Phil was an athlete, a college athlete at that, with his dad being the head football coach at the high school. I guess uh, that gave Dr. Phil a little bit of a a leg up, if you will, to becoming a a decent football player. I believe it was the University of Tulsa where he got his scholarship. Then he got injured, and football for him was over but got into tennis was a pretty good tennis player that I kind of find hard to believe just by looking at him I'm sure he was you know a little bit more fleet of foot back then but ended up going back to college different school smaller school on a tennis scholarship a psychology major who went into private practice as soon as he graduated you know I find it kind of funny that he said as a young man he he didn't have much vision But then again, I asked him if he wasn't Dr. Phil and had all this going, uh, what he thinks he would have become. And very quickly, he responded with airline pilot. He thought he was going to be an airline pilot. And I just kind of thought that was pretty interesting. You know, He, he definitely made no bones about his big break, which we all could assume the O factor. Oprah Winfrey hired his company to. Uh, do some investigative work on that mad cow lawsuit that she was going through at the time. I guess saw something in Dr. Phil, put him on TV, and the rest is, like they say, is history. Pretty funny. As a first job, Dr. Phil worked at an A&W root beer stand, but that didn't last long because the wait staff quickly transitioned into roller skates, and uh, Dr. Phil... Not a a big skater, apparently, as burgers were rolling down the street. I'm sure he's fell on his ass a few different times on those roller skates. So it was a a quick career at the A&W root beer stand in Oklahoma for Dr. Phil McGraw, who has, by the way, a few other business endeavors like his book. By the way, he's a number one New York Times bestselling author. A new book coming out called We've Got Issues, How You Can Stand Strong for America's Soul and Sanity. Plus, Dr. Phil has his own television network coming out in the near future. So this guy is pretty self-made. Really cool story. And you can find out more about uh, the book and, of course, Dr. Phil at drphil.com. You know, sometimes these guests will surprise you. Dr. Phil, uh, one of those guests, in my opinion, didn't really know what to expect from him, but uh, quite interested in his full story. So thanks for listening to another episode of Celebrity Jobber, streaming on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Please subscribe and appreciate a five-star rating. Leave a review if you would. 
All our past episodes are on CelebrityJobber.com. Some real good ones on the way in the near future as well. I always tell you that, but next week we're going to hear from Alfonso Ribeiro. Remember him from the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Carlton? He's got an incredible story and formed a relationship with Michael Jackson at a very young age. So we're going to talk to him a lot about that right here on the Celebrity Jobber podcast. As always, thanks for listening. I'm Jeff Zito.